J-E-L-L-O! The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Hallelujah from Hit the Deck. Just a few more days now before we see the old year out and before we usher in the new. Just a few more days to decide on your New Year resolutions. And if you haven't as yet discovered what a wonderfully useful, truly delicious dessert Jell-O is, I hope you'll make a resolution to try it for 1937. You can serve Jell-O in 101 different ways. You'll find each one of them exceptionally enjoyable. For Jell-O not only brings variety to your menus, it also brings the grand, refreshing taste of fresh fruit. Because all six of Jell-O's famous flavors, strawberry, raspberry, and cherry, orange, lemon, and lime, come from real ripe fruit. So for better tasting, more satisfying desserts throughout the new year, serve Jell-O and serve it often. But remember, there is only one Jell-O, and only Jell-O brings you that extra rich fruit flavor. When you want Jell-O, be sure you get the real thing. Always insist on genuine Jell-O. Hallelujah from Hit the Deck. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Christmas being over, we are left with broken ornaments, tattered tinsel, burned out bulbs, and Jack Benny. Hello uh, again, this is Jack Benny talking, a fugitive from an ash can. <laughs> well, Don, you can say anything you want today. I'm in a holiday mood and nothing can upset me, not even that Christmas tie you're wearing. Well, it is a little loud, isn't it? A little loud. Don, you could spill any one of those six delicious flavors on it and they'd never show. <laughs> you should have gotten smoked glasses with it. Oh, it isn't that bad, Jack. Why don't you exchange it? I can't. My wife gave it to me. Oh, your wife gave it to you. Would she squawk? Would she? She's louder than the tide. Well, <laughs> Then you are in a spot. You just have to grin and wear it. Now, tell me, Jack, did you get a lot of nice presents this year? Well, yes, in a way. Uh, Mary gave me a silk muffler. My sister Florence sent me a woolen muffler. And then I got some assorted mufflers from my Aunt Molly. Oh, is that so? Oh, yes. In fact, my neck had a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> Wish I were a giraffe so I could wear all my presents. <laughs> Yeah, it's an idea. Now, what did you get from your dad? Oh, my father. Mm -hmm. uh, he gave me a checkbook and a fountain pen. <laughs> Touching, isn't it, Don? Oh, <laughs> yes, very. <laughs> I'm sending him a muffler. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Don, the only problem I had was picking out a gift for Mary. Oh, is that so? Yes, I didn't know what to do. I was going to, I don't know, take so long to have it made up. So I bought her some handkerchiefs. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, you can get those made up pretty quick. Yeah? But you know, Don, of all the presents I got, the one I like best is that beautiful watch Phil Harris gave me. Mm, it is lovely. So that reminds me, Jack, Phil's late again tonight. I think he should have got himself a watch. Now, wait a minute, Don. You lay off, Phil, with those innuendos. He's my pal, and don't be talking behind his back. But you used to. Now, furthermore, if he comes in late, that's his business. I get it. Yeah. Hello, Jack. Hi, Kenny. Say, how do you like this pretty necktie my girl knitted for me? Well, it's very nice. Only it's the first tie I've ever seen with sleeves on it. <laughs> Gee, it's the, it's the craziest looking thing. Well, she started out to knit a sweater, but changed her mind. <laughs> I see. Uh, that's a pretty stick pin you've got in it, too. That's the needle. She forgot to take it out. Oh. <laughs> what else did you get, Kenny? Gee, I got one swell present. What was it? A pajama coat with two pair of pants. <laughs> what, no vest? No. No, I'm pretty rugged. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, you're the, uh, you're the type who can take it. Really? Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dope. Hello. <laughs> what have you got there, Mary? A, a letter from my mother. She had a wonderful Christmas, Jack. She did, huh? Well, read it to us. Your mother's always good for a laugh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Plainfield, New Jersey, Saturday, December 26th. My dear daughter, Mary. 
Mm, no laughs yet. <laughs> well, it takes Ma a little time to get hot. Oh, I see. <laughs> Well, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, just a line to let you know that we are all well and had a wonderful Christmas. I got a lot of beautiful presents. Oh. Your father gave me a washing machine with a built-in radio. <laughs> uh, isn't he thoughtful? <laughs> yes. Uh, right now, I'm waltzing through your father's underwear. Uh, while Bing Crosby is singing, soap gets in your eyes. Well, well. Uh, Sunday night, I am going to wash Father's socks and listen to Jack. That's nice, but she might have mentioned me before the socks. Quiet. Oh. Uh, there's been a lot of excitement at the house lately. Your Uncle Herman was here for Christmas dinner. He arrived July 3rd. <laughs> I guess he wanted to be sure and get a seat. Uh, your brother Hillard is home for the holidays from Barber College. Oh. And last night, while your Uncle Herman was asleep, he shaved off his mustache and upper lip. Oh. Some trouble? <laughs> your Sorry. uncle says that as soon as Hillard comes down from the Christmas tree, he is going to give him a once-over with a baseball bat. Well, I don't blame him, huh? I forgot to tell you in my last letter that Junior had to stop taking piano lessons. Oh. Uh, the teacher couldn't tell when his fingers were on the black keys. <laughs> Your mother's awfully funny tonight. <laughs> uh, no more news at present, except your father just came in and wants me to be sure to thank Jack for the muffler he sent him. Oh, that's all right, Mary. Tell him that. A all. love to everybody and a happy new year from your mother, Mrs. Livingston. Well, that was a very nice letter from Oh, uh, Mary, uh, when you answer your mother, will you ask her if she topped off their Christmas dinner with Jell-O? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Here's a P.S. Funny you didn't see it before. It was under a blot. Oh, I see it. <laughs> uh, tell Don Will to not to worry, as we have Jell-O every night. You see, Don? Yeah, that's right. Your correct. father always asks for the big red letters on the box, even though he can't read. <laughs> You hear that, Don? My, uh, Mary's mother saved you a little work. Oh, shucks. Now I won't have fun till after the next number. Yeah. Say, Kenny, as long as my pal Phil isn't here yet, uh, you'll have to go into your song now. Gee, Jack, I'm not supposed to sing until later. Well, Phil isn't here. You'll have to sing now. But I'm not ready yet. Oh, you're not, eh? Well, you'll sing before I count ten. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Here he comes. Ready or not? Hmm, try to put a fast one over on me. <laughs> and polite upon this lovely night we sit here making foolish conversation let's be ourselves tonight and take on shining bright and take advantage of the situation The night is young and you're so beautiful here among the shadows, beautiful lady, open your heart, the scene is set, the breezes sing of it, can't you get into the swing of it, lady? When do we start? When the lady is kissable and evening is cool, any dream is permissible.
song, And You Are So Beautiful, sung by Kenny Baker, accompanied by the Phil Harris Organization without their sterling leader at the helm. Has Phil arrived yet, Don? No. Say, Jack, are you going to ball out Phil for being late? Ball him out? Yes, like he used to before he bought you that watch. <laughs> well, that watch has nothing to do with our renewed friendship. I've always liked Phil. Of course, there were times when we didn't see things in the same light, but then there are two sides to every watch. I mean, question. <laughs> and furthermore, I don't want any more references to the present Phil gave me. Is that clear? Yes, and what time is it? Don't be so smart. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Kenny? My new necktie tickles me under the arm. <laughs> oh. Come in. <laughs> Jellogram for Tack Benny. <laughs> Right here, son, and stick to your own racket. Who's it from, Jack? Well, wait till I open it. <laughs> what is this, a cheesecloth envelope? <laughs> Better get glasses. That was your shirt. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, fellas, here's a lovely New Year's wire from New York. It says, here's wishing you and your gang a very happy New Year. Signed, Fred Allen, Phil Baker, Stoopnagel and Bud, Jessica Dragonette, Rubinoff and his violin... <laughs> Jack Pearl, the Easy Aces, Benny Rubin, and the Hall Johnson Choir. Isn't that sweet? Gee, they must have all chipped in to send the wire, huh? Yeah. I wonder who swung the deal. Yeah, I'm surprised Ed Wynn didn't get his name in there. Somebody. He didn't have to. You just mentioned it. That's right. Hey, that's right. Hey, Jack, Jack, here comes Phil now. Well, hello, Philzy. Hiya, pal. Hello, Jack. I'm terribly sorry I'm late again, but I forgot I was on the Jell-O program. Oh, that's all right, Phil. That could happen to anybody. <laughs> Gee, if it was me, I'd bet I'd get balled out. Hey, wait a minute, Kenny. Phil admitted he was late, didn't he? That's what I like about him. He shows character. Thanks, Jack. Phil tells the truth, and I hold him in the same high esteem as I do George Washington. Did he give you a watch, too? <laughs> and by the way, Phil, I want to thank you again for that beautiful watch you gave me. Here, I've shown it to everybody. Did you see it, Kenny? Yeah. You saw it, Don, didn't you? I sure did. Gee, I've been showing it around like this all week. Oh, boy. You know, Phil, the only thing that worries me is I, I might lose it. He won't if he keeps up the payments. <laughs> <laughs> well, he will. I'm not worried about that. Say, Palsy. Yes, Walsy. <laughs> You know, I, I feel quite embarrassed about the present I gave you last Sunday, that, see, that curling iron. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, <just> a, <laughs> you know, just a little oldie curling iron. <laughs> what'd you do? <laughs> what, what'd you do with it, Phil? Oh, it was swell. I gave it to my cook to make pretzels. <laughs> oh. Well, that's a new twist. Ooh. Well, anyway, I do want to make up for it, so I got another gift for you. Here it is, Phil, a beautiful muffler. Oh, thanks, Jack, but you didn't have to do that. Oh, it's okay. Mmm, and a card, too. Merry Christmas from Aunt Molly. Oh, give me that, Phil. Wait a minute. I, I got mixed up with that. I'm sorry. I, I just sort of got mixed up there. Well, anyway, it's about time for a number. What are you going to play? Anything you say, Jackie. No, no, Phil, it's your orchestra and your choice. <laughs> Well, would you like to hear a fine romance? Would I? Say, Philzy, that would be ideal. Ain't love grand. Yeah. <laughs> See, I hope he asked me over to his house for pretzels. <laughs>
Jerome Kern collection of fine romance played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, as fine a bunch of musicians as you can shake a stick at. You know, Phil, it's surprising the melody, rhythm, and tone you can draw from that little baton. Did you take baton lessons long? No, Jack, I just picked it up. Well, you'd <laughs> never believe it. It's amazing, really. <laughs> It's my turn for compliments now, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw the preview of your new Paramount picture, College Holiday. Oh, did you? Uh, how did you like me as a college boy? Well, Jack, but you look so young. I did, huh? <laughs> the old gray hair ain't what it used to be. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you saw the picture too, eh, Mary? Yeah. Uh, how'd you like my performance in it? Mm, uh, do you really want to know? No. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Uh, we are going to continue... Go away, Mary. Uh, we are going to continue... <laughs> with our... Uh, we are going to continue with our original Western serial, Buck Benny Rides Again, or Boy Meets Horse. <laughs> Again, I will play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever held up a pair of socks with a garter snake. <laughs> <laughs> Sweats it on you tonight, boy. <laughs> a rootin', tootin', hootin', shootin'. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> we are still hot on the trail of Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw who stole Frank Carson's cow. The scene opens in the office of the sheriff of Cactus County. The time is 11.30 p.m., New Year's Eve. But don't set your watches, folks. It's only in the play. Curtain. Music. <laughs> There's the phone, Sheriff. There's the phone, Sheriff. Thanks, boys. Only I could have figured that out myself. <laughs> hello, Sheriff's office. Oh, hello, did I? What's the trouble? Someone stole your telephone? Well, what are you talking on now? Oh, you never thought of that, eh? Well, think of it. Goodbye. Hmm, must be celebrating a little early. Say, Buck, this being New Year's Eve, are you going to let the prisoners out for the night? Don't have to. Let them out last year. They ain't back yet. <laughs> Can't even trust your own crooks anymore. Out here. Yippee! Wow! Zowie! <laughs> Why, Deputy Baker, what's the matter? That darn necktie is a-tickling again. <laughs> now I'm gonna... For a minute, I thought it was cactus feet. Now, listen, Baker, I sent you out on this trail a week ago to get back those stolen cows. You find any clues? I found one. What was it? A pint of milk on my doorstep. Well, that's very good evidence. Mark that exhibit A. I can't. I drank it already. Hmm. A fine deputy. Say, Buck, you know we're all invited over to Daisy Carson's house tonight to see the old year out. That's right. I bet her pappy will be celebrating plenty. He's been down to Ike Muller's saloon all week rehearsing. <laughs> I saw him last night on Main Street. Yeah, where was he laying? Right by the fire plug. <laughs> by the fire plug, eh? Did you do anything about it? I give him a ticket. Well, you've seen your duty and you tagged it. <laughs> Come on, boys, let's get over to Carson. Don't want to miss the festivities. Come, Come on, in, Sheriff. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Wilson, untie my horse and that microphone. Untie it yourself. Don't get snooty, deputy, or I'll shoot him. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> let's go. Here we are, boys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Tie up the horses, boys, and put a little gin in their oats. After all, it's New Year's. <laughs> See you inside. Hello, Daisy. Hello, baggy pants. Well, gal, you're... Never mind, let it go. <laughs> Say, Daisy, that's some Christmas tree you got there. It sure is all lit up. That's Patsy. The tree's in the other room. <laughs> Hello, Frank. Happy New Year. Same to you, Buck. Well, looks like the old year will be passing out pretty soon. If it don't hurry up, Pappy will beat it. <laughs> well, I ain't missed her yet. 
Well, <laughs> well, Frank Pierce, like you had a nice Christmas. You hang up your stockings? Sure did, Buck. What was in them in the morning? I was. I forgot to take them off. <laughs> well. Well, come in the parlor, Buck, where the crowd is. Okay, Daisy. My boys will be in in just a minute. Oh, well, that's all right, Flora Bell. Hey, Daisy, I see you hired a band for tonight. Yep, I got the Cactus Center Society Syncopate and Serenator Six Piece Orchestra. Mm. That's a nice tuxedo they're wearing. <laughs> the one with the shoes on is the leader. Well, reckon you can be high hat once a year. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Buck. Glad to see you. Well, Sheriff Andy Devine, you old horn told you. Well, how you been, Andy? Fine, Buck. And by the way, I want to thank you for that nice blanket you sent me. Blanket? That was a muffler. Well, my horse will never know the difference. <laughs> Reckon you're right. Well, Buck, I got a little present for you, too. I, I brought it with me. Well, thanks, Andy. What is it? What do you got there? Well, it's one of them newfangled alarm clocks. It's the latest invention. It is? Mm -hmm. uh, yep, and instead of ringing you in the morning, <laughs> it nudges you. <laughs> well, that's mighty considerate. Thanks, Andy, thanks. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Buck. What was that? There goes Happy Jug. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's too bad. Yeah. And there goes Happy. <laughs> well, reckon we'll all be seeing him next year. <laughs> Say, Buck, you want something to eat? Don't mind if I do, Flora Bell. Well, try one of these sandwiches. They're the latest thing in Hollywood. Yeah, what's in them? Salmon, salmon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll bid on that one. <laughs> yes, sir? Here, Buck, have some time. Thanks, Daisy. Hey, what's this swimming around in it? Doggone, I told Pappy not to mix it in the goldfish bowl. <laughs> hey, Daisy, now that you got a band here, how about a little music, fellas, and some singing? Yeah, yeah. Come, on. come on, we'll all take turns. You started, Daisy. Okay. How about you, Pappy? Get up and sing. I can sing her from down here. <laughs> all right, boys, strike up a two. Come on, fellas, swing it. Sing it, Daisy, hit it. When trouble troubles you, sing, baby, sing. Do not the birdie do. Sing, baby, sing. Yeah, when cold yeah. winter comes, and they're all not a crumb. The little birdies, they ain't eating, but they're tweeting, tweeting. Yes, oh, 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 don't, don't you know, know. I saw a day play. Hard luck to my music with that certain swing. So swing while you sing. Take it, Pappy, your next Pappy, right from the floor. When trouble troubles you, sing, baby, sing. Sing yes. Pappy. Do like the birdies do, sing, baby, sing. Oh, when cold winter comes, and they're all no out of Pappy ground, then. the poor little birdies say it easy, yes. but they're tweet, tweet, tweet. Take it, Deputy oh, Wilson. Oh, 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 don't you know, a dish of jello a day. Keep me, old Mr. Gloom, away. Everybody likes jello with those certain flavors. So swing while you eat. Take baby. it, Andy. Eat. You're next, Andy. Take it. We trouble, trouble, do sing, baby, sing. Woo! Do like the birdies do sing, baby, sing. Cold <laughs> winter comes and they're all out of sun. The poor little birdies they ain't eaten, but they're twinkly twinkling. <laughs> <laughs> It's New Year's. Oh, yippee! yippee! <laughs> well, friends, this being 1937, I want to wish you all health, wealth, and prosperity. Hooray! Hooray! And 
And I want to say that I'm running for sheriff again this year. So am I. Stick to your own county, Andy. <laughs> but I do want to say... Come in. Postal post to Frank Carson. Hey, it's for you, Frank. Duck it down here. <laughs> Well, well, what a beautiful cowhide traveling bag. Are those your initials on it, Frank? No, that's the brand of my cattle. It is? Yeah, look, there's a note on it, Buck. Who's it from? Well, it's from Cactus Face Elmer. Cactus Face Elmer? Elmer. Read it, Andy. (laughs) Dear Frank, here's a Christmas present made from the hide of one of your own cows that I stole. A happy new year to you and nuts to Buck Benny. I hope they're walnuts. I love them. Where's the postmark from, Andy? Red Gulch Canyon. Red Gulch Canyon, eh? So that's where his hideout is. Well, New Year's or no New Year's, I'm going to get them this time, boys. And I'm going to bring them back dead or alive. Buck Benny rides again. Okay. This will continue next Sunday night. Will Buck get cactus face? Will Pappy get off the floor? Will Andy be on our program? Listen in next Sunday night. Remember, same time, same place. And same plot. Playboys! Years may come and years may go, but the popularity of chocolate pudding goes on forever. Everybody likes it. And when it's jello chocolate pudding, it's even better liked than before. Because jello chocolate pudding tastes the way your grandmother's puddings used to taste. It's smoother, creamier, more chocolatey, and as simple as A, B, C to make. Just mix the contents of a package of Jell-O chocolate pudding with some milk in the top of your double boiler, and after about 10 minutes, the mixture will be thick and luscious, satin smooth. Then let it cool, and you're all ready to serve a grand chocolate pudding, mellow with the rich homemade flavor that everyone loves so well. Don't let another day pass without ordering some Jell-O chocolate pudding. It sells for the same low price as Jell-O, and there's enough in one package for six delicious servings. And if your grocer hasn't any Jell-O chocolate pudding in stock, be sure he orders it for you. That was the last number of the 13th program in the new Jell-O series, Teddy Partner. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Whoa, Teddy Partner. And once more, you will hear Buck Benny rides again. Sorry, folks, it just fell off my horse. I didn't think it was that funny. Good night, folks. The tube sing baby sing is from the picture of the same name, a fine romance is from swing time. The night is young and you are so beautiful is from Casa Magnano. The Jell-O program comes to you from Hollywood over the red network of the National Broadcasting Company. AFI Los Angeles.